we are so excited today. We are here to talk obscure animation. This is uh, something we've been doing every month. I've been doing it for a couple of years and uh, Stanford and I have been talking, uh, we've been doing these since the beginning, since last December. So it's been almost a year, it's very exciting. Uh, so I'm Rachel, Stanford is here. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Yeah, thanks so much. And we are here to talk about Bill Plimpton's uh, movie, Cheatin'. So this is going to be a lot of fun to talk about. 2014. And had you ever seen this film before? No, I had heard about it, but I've never, but I had, I'd never seen it. Yeah. yeah. I was really, really glad for the chance to, to uh, watch it, you know, and really just to kind of dive into the mind of Bill Plimpton. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, I had seen it because I started my blog in 2014, and I made a goal uh, every year since 2014. I tried to see all of the movies that are submitted for animated feature film yeah. to the Academy. And last year, I saw every single one except for one. It was this Italian Cinderella cat movie, and I've never been able to find it. I'm dying to find it just so I can be like, I did it all. I'm like a completionist, you know? Yes, exactly. Uh, and, and some of these these foreign ones in particular, I, they're hard. They're yeah. hard to find. I'm really glad that this one. I, it was on. It was on Apple iTunes. That's how I was able to watch it. How, how did? Where did you watch it, Rach? I watched it on Vimeo because I had actually oh, yeah. purchased it way back in 2014 on Vimeo. Yeah. So, so I still and Bill had Clinton, it. I think I think all of his content, if I or much of it. Yeah, he's put on Vimeo. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, he he said that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so let's talk about uh, Bill Plimpton before we dive into kind of the movie itself. Uh, yeah. So he, I feel like he is one of a dying breed of animators where you know immediately upon looking at their animation that is a Bill Plimpton animation. Mm -hmm. uh, you you know you certainly had some with something like a Miyazaki, Takahata, people like that, but you know, they're, they are uh, not working much, at least anymore. But like, even people that have like slight, you know, differences, like you can tell slight differences between like an Andrew Stanton movie and a P. Doctor movie. It's not the same as like somebody like Bill Plimpton, who it is, it is a visual oh, yeah. uh, style trademark almost you've got such and yeah i'm with you such a distinctive style you immediately know it's all typically i think he uses pencil yeah and you and you see it you know just the way the way the line is it's all it has a very uh i think for lack of a better term kind of a shaky look you know how i mean it, um and it then does. Yeah. And I, which, I, which i really like you know because yeah. again it yeah. feels like it's hand crafted which is it which it is because he really is the only guy pretty much doing all of the drawing for his films and then he he'll bring in a handful of other people to help with some of the other processes yeah uh, he said in a thing i saw that he makes about thirty thousand drawings uh yeah. for his typical feature yeah, i saw that too yeah. you can compare him to signe bonnet bon who we talked about with um with I uh, um rocks in my pockets and that makes sense because they were both uh they she was she was trained basically by Bill Plumpton. She was oh, he was a mentor to her. So that right. makes sense. But you know you right. have so you have people like Ralph Basti, um Don Bluth, uh there's there's a few um what's the Richard is it Richard Adams? The one who did the um Thief and the Cobbler um what's that? richard williams richard williams i knew it was richard something yeah richard yeah. williams would be another one obviously don hertzfeld would be another one that has a very like distinct style but yeah. there's just not that many and so bill plimpton's really pretty remarkable that way and so it's it's interesting and uh what i thought was really interesting about this movie is that i saw it as more of a drama <laughs> uh and when i was doing my research i kind of looked at it as a version of othello is how i looked at it uh -huh. you know where othello he starts to get you know jealous of desmodona he thinks that she's been unfaithful 
it starts to just the jealousy just eats him up alive i kind of felt like that that was the story and so it surprised me in in, in researching this that he saw this as the perfect plot for a bill plimpton comedy yeah <laughs> that statement was so interesting wasn't it because <laughs> again he's got pretty twisted uh sensibility for lack of a better yeah. again, way 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 to say it my initial exposure to bill plimpton's work was through a, a 30 minute weekly tv show on mtv called liquid television it was uh -huh. in the play during the 90s and it was all these short films and they were all super weird you know yeah. <laughs> but, but really interesting you know again his distinctive style and and really dark. Yeah. So when I when I watched Cheating, it just it was like again like a long form version of one of those you know things yeah. I had seen on on uh, liquid on the liquid television program. Uh, yeah. but I, it didn't seem to me. It seemed less like a comedy and more like a film noir. Yeah, and I, he does say in the interview I saw, he says, I compare it to a James N. K. M. Kane story uh, uh -huh. who did Double Indemnity, who wrote Double Indemnity. Double Indemnity. Yeah. And yeah. then you can definitely see that going through this movie. Yeah, sure. absolutely, sure. yeah. And he says, uh, I make films that are so surreal, so unbelievable, that that's where the humor comes in. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so you know humor is just such a subjective thing uh yeah. but i think i guess i can kind of see what he's saying but to I me can I, too. yeah yeah I mean, maybe again maybe he's thinking it's funny i can't say i laughed a lot during it so we ha uh we listened to this interview with bill plimpton and uh and he i felt kind of bad for him because uh he seemed so optimistic about this film that it was going to do great and the people were like really excited for you know adult animation or something different and i i don't know he said i believe there will always be drawn animation traditional drawn animation i love it because i love to see the mistakes it's like going to a museum and seeing a renoir drawing you see the hand of the master, you see the creative process right there on the piece of art. And he seemed just so excited <laughs> that I felt kind of bad <laughs> because yeah. I don't know if that's, uh, if that's really true, if there really is much of an audience for this kind of movie, unfortunately. Yeah, I think it's a real, it's definitely a niche audience. I thought it was interesting too that you know, the, the film, Cheating was was funded by a Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, and he got a, up to I think he he had a hundred thousand people that donated money to it. So, and then and, and I noticed that in the credits too, you know, because you know the names the, the people's names got put in in the the film's credits. So, I thought, well, again, maybe it's you know again not wildly popular, but there's enough popularity that. He was able yeah. to get a crowdsource funded film made and and hopefully he was able to recoup some of his expenses. But I think he's got a he's got an uphill battle for sure, you know, with what with what he's with with his art form and what he's trying to do, which again is is kind of a shame, huh? I mean it's kinda of, it's kinda of sad. But. Yeah. I I wish that there was more of a market for this kind of animation. Uh, for all different kinds of animation, but yeah. it's tough. Like, not I only is it is it very aesthetically challenging for a lot of people, but it's adult animation, and that's just hard for people. Yeah, I was just gonna say because ultimately, right? That's what I was thinking too. This this is not for all audiences. This is really targeted towards adults, yeah. and and uh, so again. It's a different kind of generation. Maybe it was the MTV generation like myself that have people that saw him on liquid television. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're funding him and, yeah. and uh, wanting him to keep making, you know, interesting, interesting films. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this does a good job of being uh, an art piece without being obnoxious. There's enough story here for me to to oh yeah to appreciate it like it's not um at 
Sundance, I saw a movie called Lou Over the Wall, which I did not care uh-huh. for at all. I felt like, yes, it is visually inventive, but it made me nauseous. I didn't like it. I didn't like the yeah. style. I didn't think the story was very good. It seemed like a copy of Ponyo to me. And I really uh-huh. didn't enjoy it at all. Whereas this, and like, I'm not a big fan of people like Godard. I know he's like the greatest ever in some people's eyes, but to me, at least, I saw his movie film Socialism and I thought it was the worst movie I've ever seen. It was awful. And uh, and I, I think that 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 can be very self-indulgent in, in this yeah. kind of art piece and i appreciate art and i wouldn't want to tell somebody not to not to do their art but there has to it's like roger ebert said in his review of film socialism which was scathing and deserved he said there has to be some kind of a ag- kind of agreement made between audience goer and artist. like you can't expect the audience goer to do all the heavy lifting and, uh-huh. and I, <laughs> I think that yeah. it strikes a pretty good balance in this for me. Yeah, me too. I, I, I wasn't sure what was going to, you know, mm-hmm. where things were going, but I thought that was good. I was, like, this element, I, I was engaged throughout the, throughout the whole, throughout the whole film. And, and uh, it really takes some interesting twists and turns and kind of, you know, truly in a twisted way, which, Again, though, I think that was the point, and and very Bill Clinton esque. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But uh, but ultimately, this way, you know, really kind of sweet too. So go figure. <laughs> go figure. Yeah, it, there's a heart to it. Uh, it's a tragedy. Mm-hmm. Like it is. I, I don't know. I really thought it was a lot like Othello. Othello is yeah in the end, but like there's there is also you know you think about the way that there's a lesson in 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 the tragedy that he let his jealousy get the better of him and uh and that's definitely true with this story so it's interesting he had actually bill plimpton his big break he had done uh, he'd actually worked as an illustrator uh for a a number of years in the 80s when animation was disney was almost bankrupt at that time which is can you even imagine like what <laughs> like, we think of them now and it's hard to even fathom that 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 was a serious possibility i uh in uh jody benson at comic-con when she was talking uh she said that like when they were filming and doing the voice recording and stuff for when they were making little mermaid that people were boxing stuff up so this was like the last like last oh, yeah. effort oh yeah and this, which you is just crazy. you just can't even yeah it's so crazy to think that this beloved art form that we all love so much was really yeah on its last kind of the last legs you know yeah so to speak before before this golden age revival. And I, I thought it was interesting to hear Bill Plimpton refer to it as, as the same thing. Cause, yeah. and then again, he was talking about it in all those different terms you about Disney. Um, and then uh, Studio Ghibli, you yeah. know, and, and these other, all these other, these other film studios internationally too, that were um, seeing a, seeing a revival on that, you know, mm-hmm. that, then all of a sudden it became viable and cool to be an animator. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. Like studying the '80s is very fascinating because you had obviously the the you know Little Mermaid coming out, uh, and and then you in '89. Before that, you had the Studio Ghibli had something like Akira coming out, which was a game changer. Yeah, Akira. Um, was that it was Akira like '88? I think like it was that, 1988. Yeah. 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 And uh, you know, so many interesting uh things like that was the start of pixar it was like an 88 87 yeah. 88 uh yeah. and um so it's it's fascinating uh so but he got his big break after doing illust- working as an illustrator for many years for uh public for men's magazines in particular he said and but then he did a short called your face that got nominated for an oscar so that was kind of his big yeah. break so. And that was so fun to see. It's on YouTube, yeah. so definitely go check it out on YouTube because it's 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 
very interesting to watch. And again, completely Bill Plimpton, you know, uh, in yeah. every, you know. And style. Bill Plimpton, Bill Plimpton can be very controversial and very, you know, he has some very controversial shorts and things that he's done. So, uh, you know, approached with a grain of salt. Well, and- <laughs> he's political too. I oh, mean, yeah. he does, you know, he's done political cartoons and things. And he's, you know, strong opinions. Yeah. Nothing's really taboo with him. Yeah, like you he know. recently did one with Trump and Putin holding hands. Trump. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you're really yeah. sensitive about that kind of thing, he may not be the animator for you. But there's nothing. This might not. This might not be. Yeah, you're saying. <laughs> there's nothing political in this movie, so you're safe. No, no, she, but but it's but it's definitely and it, it's 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 for grown ups. You know, this yeah, this is, is this is not a it's not a kids film. It's it, it's it's all. You know, grown up, uh, grown up themes and grown up things. Yeah, but I feel like it was tastefully done. I, I, I was okay. Yeah, with, I, yeah, for the most part. It's not. Yeah, it's 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 it's. it's I, I agree. Yeah, it's so um, stylistic and so non-realistic that you. I mean, it's kind of like I was talking, telling one of my friends about. Um, this Indian movie, this ba- Tollywood movie called Bahubali 2, which I love, Bahubali and Bahubali 2. And I'm like, there's extreme violence, but it's so over the top and so non-realistic, like so ridiculous that like, it doesn't really mm-hmm. bother me because I'm not like, like I was way more traumatized by something that felt more realistic, like say, like the violence in silence, which I hated with a passion. Um, mm-hmm. so anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> when it's very like over there, and so I, I would put this in this camp. What do you feel before we dive into the plot? So the character design is, um, purposely kind of grotesque in a way. Uh-huh. It's very like misshapen, lo- you know, large nose yeah. kind of a thing. Very exaggerated. Yeah. Yeah. And it also kind of varies on the, on the, uh, emotion of the scene. Yeah. too you know sometimes they'll have even more grotesque features or more you know more exaggerated yeah. features or different things you know <laughs> he said, i'm a sensualist an unabashed lover of muscular grotesque images yeah and that's exactly what it is because a lot of times it really does look it almost does seem grotesque you know because it's not 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 attra- attractive i think probably the, one of the few things that I actually thought was maybe beautiful uh-huh. was when the 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 lead female in the in the film Ella uh-huh. is walking and reading her book, almost like she's Belle. I mean, I didn't remind me of Belle, <laughs> you know, that yeah. she's walking around, uh, not necessarily paying attention to what's going on around her. She's really she's withdrawn and she's she's yeah. just you know reading her book, but she's got that flowing. Um, ribbon on her hat and then the, the way her dress is, is blowing too as she's walking I just thought some of that was really pretty and then they like she shows some of these close-ups of her face and stuff and kind of this again it kind of goes back to the the grotesque and very exaggerated um other, other but yeah again it just seems just very bill plimpton-esque you know yeah what about you what did you yeah think? It, it it takes some adjustment i think and you have to sort of yeah. know what you're getting into, that this is an art piece, this is not, you know, that, but I think it's consistent enough, and I don't know, like, do you feel yeah. like this should have been a short, do you feel like there's enough, like, meat on the bones here for a, for I thought it, I thought it was, it almost would have been more interesting as a short, I mm-hmm. thought that it, the way, the way that the story goes, and you know, I know we'll go, I know we'll get there talking about it, but seem a bit of a stretch but again that's just me what did you what did you think no i agree i think that it 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 could have been really interesting as like a series of shorts uh where you see like kind of like what he did he did a piece in the uh the prophet uh which which uh, it was a movie all right collection of shorts uh, it had the, multiple directors. Yeah, multiple directors. And I right. think it, it, all from him, if it had been that kind of a thing, like he had one short on love, one short on cheating, ch- suspicion, one short on 
uh, infidelity, one short on, you know, heart rate, whatever, you know what I mean? Like if he'd broken up that way, I think that might've actually worked a little better. A little better. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I don't know if we needed yeah, the fantastic whole part of it really. Yeah. That, yeah, that all that stuff. Yeah. That, that kind of fantastic, almost fantasy stuff. I mean, it kind of yeah. goes into this realm of magic, right? That, yep. uh, literally magic. It, it seemed, it just felt a little incongruent. And again, part of it could have been my, how, I, how I'm accustomed to digesting Bill Clinton, which again. Yeah. All right. Well, let's dive. On liquid television, you know? Yeah. 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 So yeah. one thing I really liked also in the movie is I thought the sound design and the way it used music, because there's no dialogue in this movie. And he says he likes to do that because it just makes the, uh, the animation, uh, he said, uh, he said, occasionally there might be some places where I wish I could put dialogue in dialogue, but eventually I'll find a solution to tell it visually. And it's actually more successful that way. I find it easier to make a film without dialogue simply because doing all the lip sync the recording, the editing of the words is really time consuming and work intensive. So for me, it's easier to draw without the words. So, you know, you know and, and I didn't, and I don't think, I didn't think he needed any words, you yeah. know, I mean, though I, he was, he's such a good visual storyteller yeah. that, that, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that again, in what I'm accustomed to seeing with his work, but also I thought it, I thought it worked. What 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 did you think? Yeah, I thought because the sound design was so strong, and you really felt like yeah, it's really good. Yeah, the like water and walking and like uh, occasional sort of grunting and occasional like all of that kind of helps you feel part of it. And I thought the music yeah. was very strong. And uh, there'd be times when yeah. it was opera, and I'm not. Maybe you were more aware of what those operas were because <laughs> you. More yeah than I yeah am. and they're all very they're all very appropriate you know for, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i thought they did a good but job even with the that. Sounds, yeah even the sounds like at the you know that carnival yeah and things you know it's just really really well done yeah mm -hmm. yeah so all right so we have this this is a very simple story uh it's you have jake who is a uh is a jock kind of character he's very muscular he's very strong and uh you have ella who is a bookworm who doesn't has like jaded against dating love kind of a thing at the beginning mm -hmm. and she, she goes to the carnival there's an uh with, there's, her, with her nose stuck in a book no you know, walking book, into yeah. the carnival right <laughs> <laughs> and there's an accident that happens and I uh, and he saves her from this bumper car accident that happens at the carnival, and that was a pretty good, I think, uh, opening sequence. Oh, it's a cool opener. No, I agree. It's it's, it's instantly compelling, and and uh, and how you know, yeah, Jake does this very dramatic save, and she needs saving because otherwise she really could have gotten her, you know, seriously hurt. Yeah. Uh, and 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 there's this instant connection with the two of them yeah 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 and uh they you know you've got all this electricity of the bumper cars uh and their electricity the is bumper car meeting and uh yeah i mean there's they're definitely like archetypes as far as characters you know you have your it's not like it's not like Jake is like a super well-rounded character, but I was fine with that no. because I think just for this kind of piece, like, I don't know. I think depending on the film, like you get certain degrees of character development uh, for different kinds of films. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right. right. No, I think, you know, as describing him as a jock, I think is, is a pretty good way to describe him again not not wanting to, to to slam the character but he really is one-dimensional but that helps with with what's going to happen down the road yeah. you know you can understand why he'd feel the way he doesn't act the way he does yeah. based on 
really kind of his simplistic view, you know? Like, yeah. I thought it worked especially with the opera because opera is all about melodrama. It's all about yeah. dreams and, you know, lovers and and, uh, and villains and, and all the kind of thing. Right. And that's, that's, I think, can work really well. And so I was okay with that. And I really like, probably my favorite part, maybe it's just because I love romance. I think my favorite part was the whole long sequence of them falling in love, getting married, uh, this uh, fantasy kind of sequence. And you see at one point, like Cupid uh, is, these a whole bunch of Cupids are performing surgery and like literally like giving her a heart. And- uh, Oh, I love that too. Yeah. yeah. And there's, uh, uh, there's flying babies and opera and, you know, she's making cake and, decorating things and flowers and yeah. all that stuff yeah. I, I really it's, liked. It's just like, you know, again, it's just like Bill Plimpton's take on this kind of perfect storybook romance. So there's stuff in it. It's super weird, but it's really, but I think it's also really cool. Like there's one sequence where the, you know, the, the quote unquote camera, you know, you, your point of view is flying in and I think it flies into like Ella's, chest and then it like goes yeah. inside of her oh, but you're not yeah. like seeing you're not like seeing you know her body or physiology or yeah. anything you're seeing like um it's her heart opening up it's like a bank vault and all these yes. like locked and all these things you know and then and then if i get in there and then they pull her heart out you know this you know a literal you know heart-shaped yeah. you know uh, object that but it's cool you know again yeah. it's just a really cool symbolic way of of showing this character, you know, Ella in this case, who's, who's been heartbroken and she's really locked her heart. And then, she, then yeah. Jake was able to open it up again for her. You know, I was just thinking if you compared this to uh, the, um, uh, the Beatles one, Yellow Submarine, which we both uh -huh. admired stylistically. We like the artistry, yeah. but we both found it a little boring. And yeah. I think that this, like the parts where that movie would get boring is when it would try to have a story. Like I would have just way rather it just been a bunch of music videos. Like that would have been much Yeah, better. right. Uh, and I think exactly. that this pulls off actually having a story with characters much better than that. Oh, I agree, you know, and, and I think so much of it too is attributed to the, you know, the, the, just a smart choice in these with these characters in that and that seeing and, and that this falling in love sequence at the beginning which yeah. just really it seems legit you know like this is you just really emotionally accept what's happening i also yeah. like i like how the camera is just continually moving along and oh, it I, do. This, I love this, that yeah. about his work yeah i love and, that and i it's amazing, I think, how he does that. Yeah, it just creates this flow and this movement that kind of draws you in. You ever feel like you're just like sitting? And uh, yeah, there's never anything static in a Bill yeah. Clinton scene, you know? Yeah. I also really thought it was interesting the way the camera, for the most part, was almost always looking up at the characters. And I think that that yeah. added to sort of, especially in the tense scenes. Like you really were like looking at their eyes, looking at their nose, looking at their face. Like uh, uh -huh. I thought that was an interesting choice that he made of kind of we're looking up at this characters. Yeah, I thought it was interesting too. And I, and again, I wondered why he did that, and maybe that's just kind of what he does. But it really does feel that way, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, it was kind of funny, Bill Plimpton, he said in that interview, he said, this is the kind of film that would make Walt Disney roll over in his freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, um, uh, but yeah, so the montage of married life is my favorite. And then we get into married life and we find out that Jake is getting just continually tempted by all of these women. And yeah, these women are really, you know, because again, I guess he's quite the physical specimen in his 
world, even though, again, he looks pretty grotesque the way he's going to be. But uh, still, it seems like, all, you know, the, yeah, all these women are, they are, are after him. Yeah. And I saw some people complaining that, oh, like all the women are either, you know, uh, they're all uh, either he's sort of that it, that it, that it was like some i saw some people complaining it was like toxic masculinity or whatever and i don't think so i think that i uh, you have characters that are archetypes yes but i don't think that he's in any way endorsing this behavior i think it's a no, no I didn't, drama. yeah yeah i didn't feel like that way either you know um it, to me, it, it just seemed like he he looks like what he looks like, kind of not by his doing. You know, it's just how he is, and and that it's the and and the women are are the ones who were uh, kind of Im, just yeah. impeding his happiness with his wife. Right. And like I said, like I don't need every character, especially in an art piece, to be fleshed out. And I'm fine having a character that is just basically a shrew, and you know, or is a or is a tetris or whatever. Like I, I think yeah. that's fine. Uh, and anyway, so I don't know. I I didn't have that problem. If you're listening, you had that problem. Let us know. We'd be curious. Yeah, I mean, to know. I'd like to be, yeah, I'd be very curious. I'd really like to hear the yeah their opinions about it too for sure yeah like i said i kind of looked at it as a fellow and this uh this woman who's the main temptress is kind of like an iago type of character in a fellow you know is sort of right yeah planting Mm -hmm. planting seeds of doubt you know Mm -hmm. yeah because really i i just you both jake and ella initially as as innocent right you know that they they love each other and they don't have like you know Jake gives all these temptations thrown his way with all these women hitting on him, but I never felt like he and maybe I'm reading this wrong generation, but I don't know. I think he was had every intention of being faithful to his wife. Yep, I think so too. And yeah, yes, definitely, I agree. And so uh, then we get i did i loved the sequence just visually of the woman the neighbor that is drying her sheets uh, on the clothes yep. that whole sequence was really beautiful with all the the sheets and the way they kept flowing and and moving mm-hmm. as this kind of wave of white like it looked really cool yeah oh yeah terrific animation yeah, yeah. really really interesting yeah, yeah. It was good. And so anyway, uh, we have, he finally just like rejects this woman at, he works at a uh, gas station. She, she tries to, she's tried a number of times, give her a number, uh, things like that. Uh, but she, he finally, you know, rejects her completely. And she is super, you know, uh, upset, I guess about she it. She is, she <laughs> is a woman scorned, right? Yes. She is, she is, Oh man, that's yeah. a good way to describe it. Uh, so she follows Ella at a department store, and uh, she takes a picture of her changing uh, with all these mannequins. And yeah, the dressing room is full of mannequins for whatever for whatever yeah. reason, right? I mean, we it'll, it comes to play, you know, shortly in the film, but yeah. So and, I thought it was weird. Like, what's she doing? You know, what are all those mannequins doing in the dressing yeah. room or whatever? And then also, like, oh, hey, she's taking pictures of her in the world. But then it all made sense. Yeah. And so he sees the picture and he thinks that he, she's having this affair. Clearly should have talked to her, but we're dealing with a classic right. tragedy. <laughs> and that's what classical yeah. tragedies do. Uh, they yeah. have these miscommunications that make all these fatal flaws in the character. Characters. That's what was right. That, it's total that's your right total shakespearean right there yeah uh and yeah 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 that he and that i was right and, and also i think and and and, and with you like, like like you feel watching othello or something else for like just talk to her 
You know, just, you know, find out there's an explanation. There's an easy explanation. But because I think, again, Jake is so simple-minded, mm-hmm. it just immediately sets him into just kind of this jealous sadness, right? Jealousy and sadness. And what do you think that Plimpton is trying to say about uh, marriage and sensuality, love, these kind of themes? What do you think his message well, is? Well, you know, my my take on it was, uh, and again, based on a little bit of what he was saying, you know, some of those interviews, Mm-hmm. that we watched but uh i think my my take on it was that like this love is in a way kind of is is, is fragile and fleeting yeah and maybe not even necessarily true you know from a, a kind of a cynical standpoint although you know that changes. I won't, won't give anything away just yet. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it almost it almost just like that. I just I just feel like he he kind of had a cynical view on love. Yeah. But what what yeah. was your take? I I agree with you. I think that his idea is kind of that love is dangerous. Love is the 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 highs are dangerous. The the lows yeah. are dangerous. Uh, they're but they're just like essential mm-hmm. like yeah, yeah, yeah. that scene where oh, it goes sad. it goes right into her body and the mechanics of her body and i think that it's like inevitable and it's dangerous <laughs> and we have to be really careful uh about uh-huh. about these passions i guess <laughs> um yeah yeah uh, and yeah it's just the, it's, it's an interesting thing and you know, and he do you do have these two characters that probably shouldn't be in love. It is pro I mean, it's probably a toxic relationship because uh he's he's so different than her and uh but yet they do fall in love. And and he had said, I think it was in that interview where he talked about how he had been in that had this love, they ended up moving in together, and then it turns out they were just like terrible <laughs> together. Yeah, they were terrible. So they were still very physically attracted to each other, but they could not coexist. They were, they were, were, yeah, horrible, really, in in, in the majority of their, 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 yeah. So I think you have some of that in there, some of that themes. Yeah, (laughs) I, I agree, and I think that clearly his, you know, since he wrote it too, right? So that, that definitely, I felt definitely influenced it. I also thought too, it was interesting because again, Ella, again, her nose is stuck in a book. Meaning, and I just interpreted that action as she is more of an intellectual, yeah. Too, uh, and he, he's pretty, you know, yeah, not. not. <laughs> right. I think so. Right. Well, and then you know, I guess then they're both totally broken up about it because she you know she can't figure out really what she did you know kind of just again like you're saying like Desdemona does in, in uh, Othello right like what did I do what did I do why, why are you doing that yeah. but uh uh then he, his his approach on coping with his wife's supposed infidelity is to become completely unfaithful to her yeah right? it's like his revenge is to all is to become like Wilt Chamberlain or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know he goes bonkers, <laughs> right? And yeah, and, and yeah. just yeah. And I goes thought every, was, every one of those women. Yeah, I thought it was a beautiful, devastating but beautiful sequence when Ella finds out about the affairs and you see her running through the rain and uh, going yeah. up to the hotel and you know everything like that, like. Uh, and so yeah. I thought that was all again the sound design was really great the movement of the camera was really great you really felt I thought that was really well done oh me too I you know it's it's um it is really well done it's just that yeah really sad moment I think in that montage too she's she just kind of wraps herself up in, in in the sheets on the one side of her bed you know and it's just yeah. like you just you feel so sad yeah. for this 
this you know passionate love that's that's that, that's no longer that's been ruined. Yeah. So she ends up getting this uh, hitman that's going to she's going to <laughs> yeah and, yeah now things get really weird. <laughs> yeah, and I think this is where you see that humor in i don't know if it totally yeah. works but like you definitely see where he was getting that humor because it's so over the top with like him having like a million bombs under his like his jacket or like right, knives, right. <laughs> crazy knives and all these crazy plans yeah this crazy hit man yeah yeah so i think you can see that kind of absurdist comedy coming through right yeah. right and so she finds out that there's this magician who has this device, this time machine, a, de- a device that will allow her to go into the consciousness of the bodies of the women that Jake is sleeping with. And this is the part that I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't know if it was, if it a hundred percent quite worked for me, uh, bringing in this sort of, uh, this magic element to the story. You know, it didn't. It didn't work for me at all. I just felt like it was so opposite of what had just happened beforehand. Because again, the stuff that we had seen, you know, with the relation. I mean, sure, like you know, the bumper car wreck is kind of fantastical, and some of these other things, right? But yeah, still, though, I just felt like it was really based in some kind of a reality that we're all familiar with and then and then this really took it in a different way and again it's very bill plimpton-esque you know it's like in the shorts where someone pulls their head off and then you know (laughs) and then it grows back uh just really really weird i didn't i didn't care for it i thought i kind of i uh i i liked where it ultimately took it but I just wondered if that, I just, again, I hate to second guess the artist, but I just wondered if there might have been a different way to get to that end result that might not have been so, you know, so kooky. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I, I think, yeah, it doesn't feel necessary. I think you could have had a tragedy play out basically like Othello plays out, you know, and I think yeah. uh, that you could have ended up seeing, uh, her go to somebody new and then realizing that had all been this mistake kind of like not it's not exactly that but kind of like in the umbrellas of Sherbeau when you get this like this ending where you know they 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 realize spoiler alert um that they realize that they you know they had that moment together and and then you know they're both with these different people and sort of ends on this sad tragic moment I think it kind of could have kind of ended like that uh and right i just i can't imagine anybody who like even in i just can't imagine anybody even in an over-the-top melodrama making that choice to go into the bodies of these women yeah yeah i can't either because again the choice to get a hitman i thought was kind of was was dark but i thought that it worked because again i was really expecting it to go total film noir noir you know yeah. where maybe they were both gonna like try to kill each other or somehow outsmart each other or get, turn into a real revenge yeah. kind of plot but yeah. wow <laughs> this was yeah this is this was i'm with you that was just seemed so weird and i was just thinking that's the last place i'd want to be you know, with one of these, like you know, in the mind of this person who's cheating with your spouse, like no. Yeah, like I could imagine her wanting yeah. to go into his mind and find out what he's thinking. I guess. Yeah, what he's thinking. That's possible. Or not uh, thinking. And maybe I could imagine wanting to do it one time, to maybe, uh, but m- multiple times, over and over again, like. I don't know. That's yeah, some. No. That's some messed up stuff. Like that's. It was. Like, it was. It was messed. <laughs> yeah, it was messed up. To me, again, it didn't. It seemed. I guess two things. It seemed incongruent, but then also I just kept saying, "This is a Bill Plimpton film." Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's gonna. It's gonna have. 
this really weird thing thing that's going to happen, and it's just yeah. kind of you know yeah. normal in, in 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 his world. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's probably where it would have been better as a short. We could have just kind of gotten rid of that. Yeah, exactly. And just I, been... I love your idea of those different shorts that kind of explore a particular emotion or a particular, you know, kind of part of, yeah. of, of, yeah, an ending of a relationship. Yeah. yeah. It could just be about the, the various passions of a, of a relationship to start the middle yeah. the end, all that kind of stuff. And that, I think that's all you really yeah. needed. But anyway, it ends with, uh, it ends with the, them back at the carnival uh, and they're all kind of getting electrocuted and crying and it kind of brings her back to life uh, at a certain point. And, uh, and she ends up, uh, she takes the, the ending, she ends up at the happy house with the, t- with the time machine, with the device. And so yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what was meant by that ending. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I, mean, they, they feel, I feel like they, they like, they got, I, I assumed that they got back together, right? Uh, it seemed yeah. like it, but was that pre? Did she it go? It seemed like it. Did she go back in time or something? Or why did she need the device at that point? That was the only thing I wasn't sure exactly. about. Exactly. No, kidding. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what I've got to ask Rachel. I, cause I just, I don't. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get that. So I guess in my mind, I just came to the conclusion, well, I guess this is a happy ending, but maybe either she, is she going to keep the device or, you know, or is yeah. that, I am. I don't no, know. No, I just wrote, and then at the happy house again through the time machine. So I didn't know if they went back to the time yeah. when they were in love. And I kind of wondered if they did that or who right. knows. But anyway, so it ends. The tragedy it's just, it's ends on this. <laughs> it ends in kind of on this kind of ambiguous happy note, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. And and that's the thing again. Maybe. Maybe that's helpful that it's a bit ambiguous because again, it's it's you know, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm so repetitive. It's just a bit of Bill Plimpton, you know. It's just like <laughs> it's gonna be kind of weird. Yeah. But and 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 just just to have that be a super crystal clear happy ending might not necessarily have worked yet. Yeah. Still, I guess I was hopeful that they they maybe could work it out. Although again, they might not really be the best couple. <laughs> or even just like seeing them part ways, maybe walking one walking in one direction, the other walking in another direction. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, it, rather than be am, am, ambiguous, but you know, it's very interesting. And uh, it there weren't very many ambiguous moments, uh, so I was I was fine with it. It's it, it's still a you know fun, a f- I, not fun. It's, it's certainly an enjoy an and. En- Ah, what am I saying? It certainly was an enriching experience to watch. And uh, <laughs> oh, I was so yeah. happy to watch it too. Cause yeah. you know, I, you know, what is this? Was it like, was this his eighth or ninth? That's full length feature film. I think something like that. Yeah. And, he's done, yeah. yeah. And I, I, as I said, I, I've, I've, I've seen a bunch of his shorts, but I, this was the first feature of his. And so I, yeah. I want to try to find out, find, watch some of these other, uh, yeah, some of his other features and see, see how they, you know, how they are. Uh, yeah, I thought it would be yeah. kind of interesting to look at their the reviews of this. There were twenty nine reviews. It's got eighty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes, so they have twenty five fresh, four rotten. And I think there's a lot of they they kind of capture what I was feeling in a lot of these uh, that you have uh the uh the you have matthew lacona uh he says the story is stuffed with exaggeration elongation elaboration but it's all in the service of making a commonplace circumstance love look like it feels when it happens to you i.e the very opposite of commonplace i thought that was a really interesting insight yeah that is a really good insight 
you know, that really it does both the devastation and the, uh, and the passion at the beginning, like, I, I think he did capture how, how it must, I mean, I haven't, I haven't felt either of those myself personally, uh, in that way. Uh, but I can imagine that it would feel kind of like that. Yeah, I think, I think, and again, it's, it's his, his real mastery of the medium, you know, in, in that he's able to create this with just, you know, images. And then of course, you know, you mentioned good, good use of music, but, but uh, it really does take you on this really interesting emotional journey, doesn't it? Just the way he, he does his, um, his art. Yeah. I'm really, that's really, uh, that was a good, that's a good review right there. <laughs> you did a good job, Mr. Uh, Matthew Lacona, the San Diego <laughs> yeah. Daily Reader. Yes. Uh, Scott from the New York Times, he said, like every other great animator from Chuck Jones to Hayao Miyazaki, Mr. Plimpton rewrites the laws of physics at will, but within a rigorous and coherent logic, he conjures a world of absolute improbability that somehow makes perfect sense. So that was interesting. Yeah. That, that's a nice way to describe it because again, <laughs> I feel that way about his short films too. Yeah. You know, that, they, they, you know, they all play to make sense, even though they're just so crazy. Yeah. And yeah. I, I like this Oleg Avanov from Slant Magazine. He says the plot is pure pulp. And I really agree with that. Like it's like classic tragedy, classic uh -huh. melodrama, pure pulp inspired in equal parts by the tropes and imagery of film noir, grand opera and silent melodrama. I think that's true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. It's just so funny yeah. to me, people that think this is a romp. Like, that <laughs> just shows how different people I know. Are. I <laughs> didn't think it was a romp at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, have you seen some of his other long form, you know, some of his other feature films on Rachel and how, and if so, how, how does this compare? I've actually only seen one he did last year uh, that was a live action film about if Hitler had, it was called Hitler's Folly. And it oh yeah, was kind of a disaster. Okay. It was pretty terrible. It was pretty like he was trying to be funny, and I just don't think he pulled off that that very thin line that you have to walk with dealing with that kind of content. Uh, it was uh -huh. it was not a successful <laughs> enterprise. I'm not surprised he ended up uh, okay. like you you could download it for free. Like he he obviously couldn't find a distributor or anything like that because nobody's going to touch that with a ten foot yeah. pole. So that's the only other one I've okay. seen. Uh, but uh, was that a Sundance or where was that? Uh, no, like I don't think he could have gotten into Sundance with that. I mean, it was it was very like it was it was. If they talk about c comedians that miss the mark, he super missed the mark <laughs> like it was very offensive uh, okay um and so there's no way and i don't think he meant you know sometimes you just miss the mark and he missed the mark yeah and it's, it was very terrible i kind of just like pretended that i didn't even because i didn't want to put it in my bottom 10 of the year and it totally would have gotten a space at the bottom 10 of the year if i had <laughs> i just pretended like i hadn't even yeah. seen it because <laughs> it was really <laughs> bad yeah <laughs> that good huh yeah, yeah. It's like, oh. like, nobody would yeah it just didn't work it didn't work at all uh that's the only other one i've seen of his that's the long ones uh but yeah i'd be curious to check out you know more of his his films i yeah I to, today i was actually looking for so his first again watching some of these interviews you have to prepare uh he was his he was referring to his first film which is called the tune t-u-n-e mm. and i saw there was some clips of it on youtube but i then i ran out of time so well i've got i i, I just need to check if it's on vimeo or if, if it's on i didn't see it on itunes which doesn't mean it's not there i just maybe that wasn't looking hard enough or, or you i know. know idiots and angels uh, is a popular one from him oh okay but I haven't, I haven't seen it. So, uh, well, and I just, I, I think I left this film though, really though, with an admiration for his, for Bill Plimpton's, uh, 
artistry and really his tenacity that he he's, he he gets these films done. Mm-hmm. And he just came and imagined the work, even though I you know I felt like much of the you know Act Two and, and Act Three of the, the film of Gene was 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 kind of mis- misguided in my opinion, mm-hmm. but. Um, Still, he did all the drawing, and yeah. and uh, and it's just you know what a and 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 he's not he doesn't have some big studio to back him up you know he's got to figure out how to how to how to fund these and how to get them done and, yeah. and it's really uh, this amazing and he keeps do, and he keeps doing them yeah yeah he keeps he's a scrapper he keeps figuring out how to make it happen yeah and uh, so it's really cool it's very very cool and so this is was, was cool this was a lot of fun i think if you can handle some already content and something that's definitely on this sort of surrealist side something that's more of this kind of uh classical tragedy you know elements to it then i think you should definitely give it a shot i think it's beautiful animation it does a lot of things right and it's really a chance to see art i think that we should be as supportive as possible for people that are still truly animating art and truly you know like yeah. a one man show like this this is so impressive i mean it's like um uh the last year uh, um i think his name was sebastian ladenbach doing the girl without hands which he made in his apartment like that just blows right my mind <laughs> And I it love just that. like yeah, it just like I can't I can't believe the artistry and the tenacity of these you know of these people that are that are able to do the, that kind of a project you know it's really uh, it's, it's it's remarkable and I I I completely agree agree with you I think uh, it's the even though you know I I've been critical of some of the story but the animation there's there's it's it's really it's really a a unique experience and and i i definitely recommend it too yeah for sure uh so great well this has been really fun uh thank you for uh for joining me to talk about this movie and we oh, thank you yeah we will be back next month we are going to be talking about uh paranorman uh like us under underappreciated film i think it, it i i think it's a real uh gorgeous bold and wonderful film that i love and i think that uh it's probably i think that Coraline is probably my favorite from them but i think that uh that paranorman deserves more love so we're gonna give it we're gonna give it its love and <laughs> i'm excited for that for perfect for yeah. halloween uh, for October. So we'll do that next month and I'm really looking forward to it. And we are going to talk about, uh, pack, talk about Moana too next month. So this should be really fun. And, uh, so I appreciate yeah, it. And if you're listening and you have any ideas for what you would like us to talk about for obscure animation, uh, or underappreciated, uh, animation that you think deserves to be, uh, be looked at and, and promoted, let us know in the comment section or on Twitter and uh, we'll definitely consider it. So, and if you've seen, uh, if you've seen Cheaton or any other Bill Plimpton's work, put in uh, the, let us know. We'd love to know what you think. So thanks so much. And uh, Stanford, how can people find you? Well, I'm on Twitter at Stanford Clark. And I also have a movie blog, which is moviespastandpresent.com. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews on iTunes and on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, if you can put in your reviews on iTunes, it really helps people to find the podcast. Really appreciate that. And, uh, thanks again. And we will, uh, we'll talk again next month. Thanks Bye. Rachel. See you.